Okay, well, uh, hello all from sunny Adelaide. And by sunny Adelaide, I mean it's bloody freezing here tonight. Uh, anyway, this is uh, part three of my bloggist attempt to play through Tale of Vaniera. Um, if anyone's capable of doing it, it should be me, because um, I pretty much wrote the bugger. So, um, this is uh, level three. It's called Just in Time, and I'm expecting this one to take um, approximately twice as long uh, as the previous level. So, I'll try and keep a bit of an eye on the time, and um, I'll probably end up cutting this video in two or recording it in two sessions because I don't know how to cut videos. So, I'm just going to record one and then stop and then record a second one uh, maybe another night because it's getting pretty late, but we'll see how we go. Uh, anyway, the reason this level is going to take a long time is we're here. We've got a tiny little base here, so we can't recruit many guys. We have an ally in the center. These blue units are allied and we're facing three different opponents. There's a legionary who's the ultimate aim of the campaign. We just got the level, we just got to kill him. He's got support here. He's going to pump out cavalry units. And they've also got an auxiliary unit who is uh who's he's just going to pump up mountain after mountain of auxiliaries. Now, uh spoiler alerts for this campaign. You want to um, play it the proper way. You don't want to know this information, but um one of the great things about Wesnoth is that uh <laughs> You know, if, if even if you uh, even if someone doesn't tell you the information, um, the game files are completely unencrypted, so you can go in and read exactly how this campaign works any time. Um, but if you don't want to know that and you want to try and work out what's going on for yourself, uh, I would recommend not reading any more of um, not not listening to any more of this uh, campaign and just going and playing it yourself. It is available um, free for download on the Battle for Wesnoth campaign server, and if you give me a couple of days, the new version will be available. Uh, so, what I'm going to do here uh, is recruit a Wanderer. He's going to go up the top for secret purposes. Going to recruit my best Rain Dancer units. Um, they're going to go assassinate some dudes. And, and I'm going to send my leader out here to use his backstab ability to kill this legionary just in case. Uh, in a perfect world, our allied leader is going to move off of that keep and we're going to grab it um, and then get some actual recruiting power. But in all likelihood he's not going to do that and we're going to be stuck on our little keep. Uh, if you're playing on the easier difficulty modes, if you're playing on the easier difficulty modes, uh, there are more keeps on the map, but in hard difficulty mode this is uh, what you get. Uh, it is perfectly possible to play this level from the little keep, but um, it's harder and uh, since I'm trying to show you all these levels that this campaign is easy, I kind of don't want it to be hard. Uh, so basically, the problem with this level is that it spends a long time and a lot puts a lot of weight on what your ally does. Um, your computer controlled ally is pretty dumb, and it's basically um, this level is going to be won or lost depending on what he does. Um, so we watch him basically get himself slaughtered, um, trying to attack little pink units all over the place. Oh, he's he's left the keep, so that's great. And um, basically, what he does is going to completely drive how this level turns out. You can win it either way, even if he really sucks. Um, but you can't let the leader die. If you let Phelan die. Um, you lose the level. So um, what we're going to need to do here is assassinate the pink leader. Um, and there's a couple little tricks I'm going to show you for how to make that easier. Basically, your ally is going to get slaughtered. Um, if he gets really lucky on this first day, he can deal with almost all of those Lavinian units um, that are pre-recruited here. But uh, he has to get pretty lucky, and this time he hasn't done that. Okay, so um, we're going to start recruiting a bunch of units. Um, well, we're going to start recruiting one unit, and uh, next turn when our allies guys move out, we're going to we're going to recruit some more. Uh, what do we got as far as fighters with any experience? No, nothing to speak of. Oh well. Basically, we're just going to get some fighters in here, um, make a little bit of a more sensible line that our allied troops can make a little barrier around. Um, we're going to use our Wanderer up in the north here. He's just going to waste some time up north. He's going to head over to the east in a little while. Uh, and these two guys are going to steam south. Their job is going to be to kill off that green leader um, without getting themselves killed. Um, because we are going to need those units. But realistically, they should be fine because the majority of those green forces are going to be drawn right into here to fighting uh, our main force and the main blue force. Um, now... You'll be able to see here the AI in Wesnoth, um, when it's finding itself, does some strange things. Uh, you'll be able to see quite a lot the priority that in this level, um, the priority that um, Wesnoth AI puts on trying to kill stuff. 
Um, sometimes it just does crazy things in order to try and kill its enemies, and it's it's sometimes quite amusing. But uh, humans wouldn't play like that. Um, one of the ways you'll see this a lot is the fact that you, there's going to be hundreds of these tiny little black units riding around, and um, these elves are going to go completely out of their mind trying to kill them all. This uh, Siege Blister here is the bane of your existence. If he gets really lucky at the beginning of the level, um, he can really, really cause some problems. Um, you can see here, uh, the blue guys have a couple of um, pre-recruited loyal units. Realistically, you'd expect them to die. But every now and then, um, when things go right, they don't die, and you get to keep them um, going on into the rest of the campaign, and that is, it's a wonderful thing. Um, but yeah, we're going to spend a lot of time sitting and watching what the AI does this level, because we control less than a fifth of characters on the map. So um, we're going to have a lot of time to talk. Um, one of the things I'm going to try and talk about a little bit, um, if I get the chance, is basic Wesnoth strategy and how this game is really supposed to work, because I understand that um, some of you watching this haven't really played the game before. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do, because I'm not going to spend a whole a whole lot of time, have a whole lot of control, but hopefully just by watching a little bit we'll be able to explain what's going on and um, we'll be able to cover a little bit more of those bases. Um, yeah, as much as as much as much uh, things in the Imperial Era apply to mainline Wesnoth anyway. Otherwise I'll just tell you about the Imperial Era and how much I like it. Um, I hope you can get a bit of an idea now for how it's just kind of fun. Um, there's none of this, you know, generic elves, generic dwarves, generic orcs, everyday Tolkien-esque battles. I mean, it still has that sort of high fantasy feel, but um, there's a little bit more variety here. I really like the idea of the Marauders. I really like the idea of the Lavinians. I just feel like the factions are kind of fun. Um, you know, they keep that kind of high fantasy feel without just being completely generic, um, as much as they're, you know, very much tropes. Yeah, what I'd really like to do with this fighter is get him out here to attack this archer, because this is the upgraded version of the bowman that we met earlier, um, this siege archer, and once again, he's got no defense. So, you know, in a perfect world, we'd get a big attacking unit out there and blow him up. Um, as it is, we can't do that, so... I guess we'll just go after this um, this field ballista. He's also an upgraded version um, of the bowman, but he does have a melee attack in the middle of the day. Oh, well, fighter's not worth many points, we might as well. Uh, so, let's just get some, just start pumping some units out there. What we're going to try and do here is, as always, is hold the good terrain. We're going to uh, get our best guys as possible. Uh, we're going to keep them alive as long as we possibly can. And uh, we're going to, you're going to hold the good terrain, destroy the Lavinians in the night time, and look to win. Um, as much as possible, we're going to try and keep our allies' units alive, but it's it's really not going to work. Um, um, they're, they've got a high level of what the AI in this game thinks is playing cautions, cautiously and cleverly smart, but um, actually, it's just it's just not that good. Uh, we got a fury here, yeah, we do. Um, it's just not, not that good, and we should we should probably expect most of our allies guys to die. We'll send Vanier out of here, pump some pump some damage in there because uh, realistically, we're running out of gold to recruit stuff anyway. So might as well let our ally do that job for a bit. And uh, keep on sending these wanderers, this wanderer around, picking up villagers. Um, villagers are what it's all about. You can see we're losing five gold a turn here, then that gold's doing nothing. So as soon as we can even out the, the gold disparity, the better. Now these uh, these horsemen here, uh, they've got a little thing called charge, which means that when they're attacking you, they deal double damage to their regular attack, but um, their opponents also do double damage. So they're sort of... Uh, bit of a melee brunt force unit. Um, we don't really want to face them straight off, so we're going to try and skirt around the outside of those, skirt around the outside of those horsemen with these rain dancers because they're they're precious, and we're going to use them to assassinate the horseman's leader. Uh, hopefully, the horsemen will look for easier targets in amongst those warriors anyway. Um, the, the allied fighters, which <laughs> they're not ours, so we don't care about them. Yeah. Well trained Phalan's going to jump straight back on that keep, wait for his turn to recruit. He's yeah, man after my own heart, that elf. Elf after my own heart. Yeah. So um, this 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 uh, it's just a matter of of waiting basically while we can sort of have something to do while we clear out those first um first units that have been stationed out there. But really, we're just waiting for a little bit of a more favourable time of day so that we can fight the green and the pink units um and try and grab these castle hexes here with the good defense before these auxilia get in there because it's that did just gonna be annoying 
Um, so, what can we really say about this game? Uh, it's all about trying to attack, you know, like all video games. You're playing a great big game of rock, paper, scissors. So, um, my ally here is using his ranged attacks against the horses that have really quite an effective melee attack um, and not such an effective ranged attack, although they still have, personally, what I think is a, a, a melee attack that's just a little bit too good for what they are. Um, in order to do this, they've put some of their guys in compromising positions. You can see this this tracker here is is dead, and that's just a bit sad because he's a, a handy guy to have going down the campaign. You can see that charge attack there means that those horsemen are doing a lot of damage, even though they're neutral and therefore don't get any kind of bonus for this being the middle of the day. Um, you don't want to miss with those guys because um, your enemies are going to do a lot of damage back to you. But if you can hit with a charge attack, it's a great way to break through an enemy line. Char it's one of the regions that charge is really quite rare. Uh, I think there's only two units in the Imperial Era that have it. There's the Horseman and uh, one of the Orcish units has it as well. Oh, and a, and a bird, because you know, birds. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> we've sort of shown you one of the more out outrageous abilities out there in the Wesnoth universe, and that's... Uh, that's that's Berserker, and we've seen that twice on the Crusher and the uh, Fury, and it's it's not normally like that. Um, special abilities are reasonably few and far between. There's not that many of them. It, it's really quite amazing what Wesnoth can do with just a few variations on a theme. I mean, the game is the rules are simple. The, the game itself is just not got all that much to it. Um, but with a few small variations, you know, this unit acts in a slightly different way. This unit acts in a slightly different way. Um, this game can have a lot of variety, especially when you start expanding out into running, you know, running mods and completely different factions. So once again, we're gonna kill off the easy guys to kill off and hold the best possible defensive terrain. Um, I know I said earlier, wanderers are better in the forest, but um, oh, well, I kind of want my allies to take the brunt of this this uh, attack. I don't actually want to lose too many of my guys because I'm attached to them. So we're just gonna push back just a little bit. Try and get Vanier to a village if I can here, because he's a little bit damaged. I could put him out there, but he might get killed. How many of these guys can reach him? Oh, the any it's worth it. Let's go. Um, so we're pretty much not using our leader as as uh, as a as a recruiter anymore, but we've probably got enough guys to make a good start on this level anyway. So we're not going to worry too much about that. Going to use him as a going to use him as a, a bit of a tank unit. That's cool. We can we can grab our allies' um, villagers here because realistically he's just going to waste them. I mean AI allies. They what do they know? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna use use his resources for the greater good, and um, I'm sure he'll thank us when he's um you know when some of his guys live through this level. Um. So my wonder is here. Uh, you know their their great ability is the fact that they've got just such a ludicrous amount of movement. They can really, not only do they have a large number of moves they can move, but they've just got a good movement type. So the way that Wesnoth works is that um, each different terrain type that you move over has a certain value for each unit type that says it takes this many moves to move through this terrain. And Wanderers just have good have a good move type. Um, so. Not only do they have a ludicrous amount of speed, I mean, they're, they're pretty much equivalent to a, a cavalry-type unit in other factions, but they also ha just have a really good move type there. They're probably too good. I'm probably going to have to look at nerfing them again. Um, but for now, they're just, they're just a useful guy to have around and, and know where their abilities are. They're pretty fragile. You've got you to gotta look after them, because outside of the forest, they, they really don't have a huge amount of hit points. You can see even this level 2 one's only got 37 hit points. Um, that's compared to this this level 1 fighter who's also got a max 37 hit points so they're fragile but um, if you can if you can defend them they do a lot of damage and that's that's what we're after here so we're not going to be able to avoid this horseman but it's getting into the night time so we're going to deal a reasonable amount of damage back so um, that horseman's not going to get particularly good uh, defensive bonuses from any of this terrain so we're just going to try and see if we can make these guys just fight the one and uh, they should be able to should be able to overpower the one horseman there. We'll see what happens next. So these blue guys, I would expect to sort of 
jump out here as much as possible and try to start killing Auxilla because Auxilla are a weak source. Um, that'll mean that there'll be a little bit of a gap down the bottom here where the pink guys are going to come in and exploit. And that's fine, that's why I've got all these rain dancer type units here. They're going to basically have fun camping the legionaries. Um, ultimately, what we're going to want to try and do is trap most of these pink guys in these forests just here where we've got the excellent defense. Um, we probably won't succeed at doing that, but if you're doing this level, you know, perfect, that, that's what you're aiming for. Um, you can see these poor fighters, they're trying their best. They're going to kill off a bunch of auxilla, but they're just not going to get the experience points, and they're going to die. I mean, there's just mountains of auxilla over there. Um, there's, there's really not much you can do about that. Um, thankfully, though, that's really not such a disaster, because there's a way to, on this level, uh, there's a way that you can get the auxilla on your team. Um, you can sort of trick them and trick them into being on your side. No, I mean you can you can get the auxilla onto your team um, reasonably easily, um, and so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, you, also, if you just win the level and the auxilla leader is still alive, you get the auxilla, but that's not that useful because if you've won the level, you probably don't need the auxilla. Um, but uh, you know this is supposed to sort of be indicated by the fact that. Um, so it would be indicated by the uh, discussion at the beginning and through the level um, without sort of just saying, hey, Athos will join you because that's boring. Um, but it's not indicated that well. So sort of by watching this video, you're sort of getting a bit of a getting a bit of a head start on the normal uh, Imperial Era player that would just sort of luck across this, if at all. Um, there's definitely, in the last couple of levels, we tried to build this idea that the Lavinians in the Auxilia don't like each other very much. Um, and you'll see when they kill the green leader um, that there's a little bit more of an interplay there that sort of, I'm still trying to suggest that idea. It doesn't really come across that well. I'm not a great writer. If you've got um, ideas for how to do that a little bit better without sort of making it hugely wordy, um, I'd be really interested in that because um, I'm getting towards the level where I'm going to say, look, I'm, I'm finished of playing with Tail for any hour. It's as good as it's going to be. Let's um, go work on my own projects. Uh, or at least some of some of Turin's other projects that he left sort of partly done when he left Wesnoth all those years ago. Um, got some 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 ideas that I want to play out. You can see these auxiliary here. I mean, um, like I said earlier, they don't have zone of control, so they're really quite a caught in by our units. But when they got that many guys and they've got a reasonably good move type of their own, they don't care. I mean, they can lose they can lose two or three guys for every one of mine and, and it's not a disaster. It's certainly not a disaster to the Luminians. Um, they're just, they're just going to soak up soak up as much of my power as they possibly can and um, they're going to be happy sacrificing themselves, which is, um, you know, <laughs> it's good for the Luminians and, and it sort of makes sense from a from a universe and, and gameplay point of view. So I really like the way this level works, the way those auxilia just sort of suicide themselves um, just from a universe point of view. Uh, so we got sort of two choices here. We got to, we can kill this Lavinian, and or go after this village, um, which is probably the best thing we should do. Sorry, Lavinian. Well, he's actually a Namidian. You can tell because he's got dark skin. Um, so they're they're Lavinian allies called Namidians. They ride um, horses and camels, uh, horses and hippopotamuses. Um, so I could go after this village, but what I actually want to do, my main aim with these guys is to kill off this leader, who's going to jump back to this keep. So I'm actually going to bring this Windlash over here, so that next turn he can hit that keep, um, if at all possible. In in a, in a perfect world, I'd love to be able to trap this leader back in here, but I don't quite have any guys that are able to do that. It's possible the blue guys will do it for me, but um, yeah, I wouldn't really expect that. It's Frankly, the fact that he's come all the way out there to try and deal damage to that rain density is, is pretty miraculous in and of itself. Uh, so, we got Vaniera up here. He's got a reasonable amount of health. Um, we don't want to get him too swamped, though, so we're not going to find anyone here. We're just going to wander up nice and close to Athos for completely non-suspicious reasons. I think I've got to move that wanderer last turn. That happens. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we're just going to... What I might try and do here is just uh, form a bit of a line between the main line of these... Auxilla and their leader, I'm trying to separate him off from them a little bit. Uh, I'm going to lose my guys realistically, but don't really care because they're they're not that good. So don't care. Uh, I don't want to lose this rain dancer here because he's grabbed he's grabbed a lot of experience. So I'm gonna 
going to kill this guy with him. He says as he completely fails to kill that guy with him. So now I've put him in danger, and that's that's excellent. So now I'm going to spend <laughs> this little bit of this level is going to be about trying to defend that rain dancer who I put in a dumb spot. So you do have to really think through the consequences of what you're doing when you do this stuff. Um, I don't want to lose either of these rain dancers because they're just so close to leveling up. You can see here, even if I kill this auxilia, I'm going to be one experience point short of killing anything, and um, I'm going to die for the privilege. So put this fury here as a defensive unit. Not really the most solid defensive unit out there. And we might jump this chakra all the way up here to do some damage. Okay. So you can see that... that one mistake in here, one unlucky attack on that Numidian really changed how I was going to play that that section. I was really hoping to grab some of these units and dump them in here in the forest, and, and I've, in order to conserve that unit, I've I've had to change that plan. Um, you can see that these these this auxilla can still get in there, but he's not going to kill that rain dance by himself. So, um, yep. Okay, so what are my blue allies going to do? Hopefully they're going to come out of their castle a little bit and um, and kill off some of the guys. But of course they're going to, as much as 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 much as they're possible, they're just going to target weak units, try and pick them off, which is going to mean that that pink force down the middle there is going to is going to live. And that war mage is going to put himself in a dumb spot where he's going to get killed by those pink guys. So, yep. Um, as you know, how I was saying earlier, we'd like to conserve those loyal units, but those loyal units, um, as much as they've got a reasonably high caution rating, um, they value their own lives pretty well, uh, they, they value killing things more. I mean, almost all the AIs in Wesnoth really just like killing stuff, um, which is appropriate for the Imperial Era, because in the Imperial Era, we like killing stuff. Um, <laughs> wouldn't you? This, <laughs> what's the point of playing a strategy RPG when you're not killing stuff? You're not going to get any experience points that way. You're never gonna get out of the jungle that boy, that way, boy. Um, that's a lucky fighter. He's dead, but um, he's a lucky fighter. He might have, he might have saved that war mage. Yeah, all I need is that wanderer to live a little bit longer so that they don't get through to my rain dancer. Yeah, they're gonna go kill a fury. Yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, that fury is just asking for it, really. He's got good enough defense there. He might live, in which case we'll be all be very impressed. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So you get a sense for how this level works. Those pink guys are sort of the main concern. They come through the middle, and you've just got to have enough guys there to block them out. Um, you send enough guys up the top to sort of distract the black guys, but then they're not your prime consideration either. Yeah, that Fury's, that Fury's still going to die, isn't he? Because there's going to... How many more of those Exilla can get to him? Yeah. That's a pity. Uh, you know, that's about, that's about as well as a Fury ever does, to be perfectly honest. they just not... They're just not that good, which is which is just as well. If if there was a berserker unit that was that good, um, people would complain. Okay, so we got this problem here. We don't want to kill that enemy leader just yet. If we kill him, um, well, hey, he's going to stop spawning enemy units, but that's not our prime consideration. What we're going to try and do here is kill the green guy first, and then attack him and not kill him. And if we can if we can fulfill those aims. Um, attacking him in some way, dealing some kind of damage to him, and have him live, then he and his guys are going to say, screw these Lavinians, we don't want to die for them, let's let's join the elves. Uh, and they're a handy guy to have, even though, you know, Lavinian Auxilia, as compared to our Rain Dancers, for example, are a pretty useless unit, they've got some, some real advantages over the seed. Um, the big battle that's coming up, big set-piece battle, we're going to have to fight a lot, um, for a number of days, and that's going to require a um, strong presence uh, in the daytime as well as the nighttime. So, because we've got a completely chaotic faction that only can fight, can really only fight in the nighttime, um, having the ability to have a unit that doesn't care that you can just station and that you can sort of use as a suicide meat shield um, is going to be invaluable, invaluable to our defense, even if you know they don't last that long. Uh, we didn't do that much damage to that leader there, but we should, with the War Mage as well, we, we might be able to kill them next turn. Um, so we're just going to use these guys to... I'm going to use these guys to stop the pinkies. These blue guys are going to come through. We want to give them 
a reasonable amount of these kills just so they want to come through. Uh, just, just grab some some good terrain and 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 play a little bit a little bit safer here. Make sure we don't lose anything. We can pretty much abandon this stuff. Let the blues deal with the pinks. They're slowing down. Bring this rain dancer. Hmm. I was going to say here, but just a little bit concerned what the Lavinians might do to him. So we're just going to leave him there. No harm playing it safe. We've taken the brunt of stuff so far, so why not let our ally do something? Now, just for the sake of it, we're going to try and break our ally out of here. Remember, he can break straight out of that hole because um, level 0 units don't have a zone of control like this Lavinian Bowman does. So we can just drop him straight back to here. And then we can defend him with that tracker. Yeah, I mean, I know we said we don't care about those guys, but really, I do. I do care about all my little guys just a little bit. Uh, it probably means that I'm just not a good general, but what are you going to do? So you can see once again here, we're, um, we're throwing away the units we don't care about. Um, pretty basic Wes North Tenor is anything that's worth less than 20 gold that isn't going to become reasonably soon a unit that's worth more than 20 gold is not a unit that you care about. It's not a unit you want to want to take into the next level, unless there's some special criteria. You know, if it's a healer, if it's a uh, if it's a healer, a unit with some kind of special ability. If it's a loyal unit, you know, there are advantages to keeping those type of units. We might actually keep that war mage, which is that's going to be wonderful. Um, but for the most part, you know, there's no point conserving wanderers and fighters with two or three experience points. Um, come the next level, we're never going to see him again because we're never going to recruit him. It's going to cost us 20 gold to recruit him and it's cheaper to buy a new one. I mean, for one or two experience points, um, <laughs> that's not worth anything at all. Um, you know, sure, if they're a couple of points away from getting an upgrade, yeah. But um, otherwise, no. Now, as long as that Windlasher lives there, gee, cutting a little bit fine, we might actually be sacrificing that Windlasher if we're desperate to kill Qantas this turn. Um... And uh, as an Australian, as much as I like to kill Qantas, I might. It's not that urgent for me to get Athos in this map, uh, in this in this level. I'm more concerned about keeping him for the next one. So um, I might actually, since I've been a little bit unlucky with the defence rating there, I might actually just ease off and uh, let my War Mage deal some damage into him, dra drop my drop my Windlasher back and therefore keep him to fight another day because my Windlasher is going to be probably as valuable to me as my um, so as, as Athos and his troops are, especially since that my um, my Windlashes are a little bit short because we stuffed up at the end of the last level there. Uh, so you can see what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to call this... Uh, we're going to call a little bit of break here. It's been, what, 25 minutes? Uh, so we'll come back in a moment and play the rest of the campaign. Uh, so for now, uh, this is Unwise Owl signing off for uh, Blogist. Uh, this is part three of my Battle for Wesnoth run in Tale of, Tale of Vaniera. That's an Imperial Era campaign. Uh, it's all going pretty well, 